Hello everybody. Welcome to another Carnet live stream. It's Thursday and today we're creating map frames. Very excited about this one. Map frames are a lot of fun to make. So we have a lot of material to cover today and I'm really excited to kind of show you how to make frames, how to apply them to pre-existing maps um, and how to create your own map frames that you can share with other people. We'll be doing all of that stuff. Super exciting. Hello, Nemrod. Hey, Cheryl. Awesome. Hey, I'll be sharing some of your work too, Nemrod, by the way. I love your work so much. So I'm going to be sharing some. Of course, I will also be shamelessly plugging in my own work here. <laughs> but I also want to also mention there are some other great artists as well, and I want to showcase their work and in every stream if I can. Yay! The musical rogue is here. Yes, I love it. I love it. Some familiar faces, some people I love, and I'm glad that they are here. Very excited. Map frames, everybody. Map frames. I hope you're ready. Map frames are super duper awesome, extremely useful. They're great for plugging in your lore, creating some illustrations to create more backstory. If you want to have lore about your city, characters that control a region, so many different things that you can use. I just wanted to briefly see everything before I had to skedaddle. Hey, Doggy Crimson. Bummer you can't make it for the whole thing, but I'm glad you said hello. Hello and welcome. Glad that you're here anyway. That's still wonderful. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to wait just a few more moments for people to filter in. And then I'm going to. So, the way that I'm going to break this down is first, I'm going to showcase a couple maps that myself have made and other people have made, just to kind of give you a feel for what kind of things you can do with frames on your map. Then I'll also be showing you after that how to make your own frame, whether it's applying it to a pre-existing map or you just want to make your own frame that you can share with other people or that you want to put other maps on. So we'll be covering a lot of stuff today. I'm super excited about it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, don't be shy. Feel free to ask. Okay. All right. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get going. So first, I just want to showcase a couple, a couple maps real quick. Uh, that I have made and other people have read, made, read, <laughs> have made, and just to show like what you can do with uh, a frame. So I've made frames can be um, made with stamps. They can just be illustrations, and they can be tied in with locations on your map. So one of the first things I want to mention about a frame is is having a theme. You have to think about the general theme of the map that you made. So like, is it a desert theme? Is it a, uh, a valley theme? Is there something in the map that uh, you can put on the frame? So for instance, there's this obsidian gate, and then I have these two characters on the left and right side. Those are the gatekeepers that protect that gate to going into that land. So I've incorporated a little bit of lore, maybe the characters of the gate. Notice the gate is most closest to you. I've incorporated it into the frame. So it's kind of clear that these gatekeepers are the ones protecting that gate. So it's always nice to focus on what is the theme, uh, what is the theme, and how can you apply that to your map frame. Oh, got a question here. When a stream, how to make a bookshop? <laughs> uh, well, I do know that I, I would love to do a stream on how to create uh, those front-facing shops. Uh, there, there's not perspective in them, but not everyone likes to do... Um, not everyone likes to do theater of mind, and there's nothing wrong with theater of mind. Really, it's just a matter of personal preference, what you like. Some DMs like to add a lot of visuals when they're uh, in their, their sessions, like they want to show the inside of a shop or whatever, just to you know give some eye candy uh, to your players. That's fine, too. You can just do theater of mind. If you're very good at storytelling, then you're like, okay, I'm going to be doing uh, storytelling instead of using, you know, using that ability instead of uh, doing uh, the imagery so it's up to you all right <clears throat> okay so I'll showcase a couple more frames so I made this one and I also want to showcase another one um, by Nemrod did a great job kind of creating a circular map and then decorated the frame applying filters just absolutely beautiful work great job Nemrod really 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 like like this map great job kind of putting together showing the city pieces going around the circle and then the kind of a simplified uh, top-down just cities that are just blobs of color 
instead. And so more of the focus is actually on the frame, but you still have a beautiful uh, map in the center to look at and to kind of get a feel for it. So really great work, really enjoy uh, the framing on this one. Great work. Oh, hey, first time chatter. Hey, Mikhail091. Hello there. Finally got a chance to watch your stream. Hey, I am so glad that you're here. We're doing map frames, so I'm really glad that you're here. I'm just showcasing a couple frames, and then we're going to jump right into showing you how to make them. So I'm excited about that. Now, frames can be really, really simple. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, highly illustrative. Like, for instance, this map is a very simple frame. This is a built-in frame stamp. This user, uh, Kazwarzi Maps, made this. It's called the Hajali. Great map, really like uh, the style, the kind of saturation in it, uh, the desaturation. And I enjoy just a very simple frame. It doesn't have to be uh, super complex with all this illustrations and lore. A, a map frame can be very, 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 very simple. And simplicity can be super beautiful, you know. Frame, deciding what frame to have, again, really depends on the map that you want to frame, right? So if you have a highly detailed map uh, and you, you are thinking about putting a frame on it, well, since the map is highly decorative and already quite busy, then make a very simplistic frame. So this user kind of figured that out. They have a kind of a busy map in the center where they have the city and the blocks and everything. And then it kind of fades out a little bit with just uh, surrounding forest and trees. So it's great to go ahead and just you know, put down a simple frame. You don't have to make a super complex frame with a super complex map, right? So it's a matter of personal preference and it's, a, it's really determined by the map, okay? We all know a good map frame requires the presence of a poto bird. <laughs> uh, feel free to ask any questions, okay? All right, so you can make simple frames, right? There's also frames that have lots of space so that you can fill in a lot of lore. This map by also by Nemrod. There's a lot of negative space. This is something you always want to factor in when you uh, when you always want to factor in when you're applying a frame. It's the negative space outside of the map, right? That surrounds it. That's that space. So if you want to add lore, obviously you're going to have more negative space lining around the map to put in that lore. Okay. So you always got to factor in negative space when applying your map frame and map frames can serve lots and lots of functions right so i created this top down map it's just a, a little section uh, of a city that's like a district and so i just put the most important pois that's points of interest inside the map on this map and then i numbered them and then put them in the frame so you can tell what each kind of location looks like right so that's something you can apply to city maps you can apply frames even to battle maps if you want depends on how you implement it a map frame can be as simple as just the negative space so this is a watercolor battle map i made and all i did was just put the majority of the map in the center and then i left the negative space around it with just a white frame around the outside that's it it's as simple as that so there are certain ways that you can frame your map Okay, lots and lots of different styles and different ways of doing it. Okay, thank you, Musical Rogue. Hello, Profane Hans. I'm glad that you're here. Okay, so lots of different ways. And map frames are also determined by your skill level, right? So if you have a lot of artistic skill or you have some talent, you can go in and throw in more illustrations with your map. If you know how to paint, you're good at hand drawing, you want to uh, create a little bit more decorative frame, you want to incorporate characters into a one shot or whatever the campaign is like this is a curse of strahd map that i put together and i just did some illustrations that i made right here in the tool and incorporated it into the frame you know it's this uh, curse of strahd is so iconic the 5e so of course you know i had to put in some kind of frame to kind of emphasize some of the characters some of the story without giving too much spoilers of course right so Putting in your frame is determined by a whole bunch of different factors and how you want to, uh, what kind of things you want to put into uh, the frame. So lots of different options, lots of ways to go about it. I also want to mention, I'm shamelessly plugging in, I've made a couple frame, pre-made frames and I know a couple other users have as well. So 
if you uh, don't have the time to sit down and make a frame, you can go ahead and go to my profile and just go and look for these pre-made frames. All you need to do is just either paint your frame onto in where the frame is, or you can just um, flatten it. You can export your map as a, as, a, as a JPEG, an 8K, whatever resolution you want, import it as a custom stamp, and then apply it to put it on the map, and then just whatever layer, the FG or BG layer, flatten it to the FG or BG layer, and that way it will be on there. It's probably a little bit easier than painting, because in the paint you have to resize with the scale and kind of line it up a little bit properly. So it's probably a little easier if you just uh, export your map and then import it as a custom stamp, and then you can just flatten it, and that way it'll be right there in the frame perfectly, and I'll show you how to go about that. Uh, here comes an important uh, interest, oh, that's an interesting question. I like that. Okay. All right. Okay. So now I've kind of explained that a little bit. Uh, let's talk about actually applying a map to a pre or a frame to a pre existing map because a lot of you are probably going to end up, are probably going to end up. Uh, applying a frame to your already existing map instead of trying to uh, create a frame and then putting a map on it. Now you can do that and I will explain how to do that as well. And when it comes to frames there are multiple methods and it also again depends on the map that you're using and that means whether you have to resize it with the resize option, whether you need to scale it down or if you need to flatten it to use the mask tool to make your frame or if you need to group everything put it in the bg or a lower layer and then put your frame stamps on top of it so lots and lots of different ways to go about it so i found this cool map right here uh, on the explore page by your evil toenail it's a great map i really really like it and so i feel like what we should do is just apply a frame to this and I chose this one for a specific reason. There's not a lot of text on this. There's not a lot of things are on the edge, along the edges that are gonna be blocked out if I apply a frame to it. So it's kind of nice, right? So keep in mind that some of your maps, the frame might be so thick that you might not, be, if there's a lot of illustrations on your map, it might block some key important parts of your map. So with this one, I think a very simple frame on this one without adding a whole lot of lore. There's not a lot of text on this, so there's not a lot of lore to work with. And so we'll just make a very simple frame with stamps in this one, and then we'll go ahead and put together another one using the mask tool, and I'll show you how to do that, okay? So a lot of different things to cover. So let's just edit this map, open it up right away. It's a great map, I really like it. They did a good job. Well, let me go back real quick and just check the resolution on it. One moment. I'm gonna show you guys how to open up a map in a different resolution. You go to open resolution, this is in 4K, it's a bit high, I'll take it down to 3K, and then we'll open it up. All right, just allow that a moment to load up, and then we'll, I'll show you what you should do when you're uh, making a frame with a lot of stamps on it. Because again, two ways to make frames, mask tool with stamps, and that all determines, it's all determined by what exactly you want in the frame. So let's go ahead and first, uh, look at this map. We're going to go over it and figure out what kind of frame would work best. Open it up. Just give it a moment to load. Okay, yeah, very cool map. I really like it. They did a good job. All right, so with this, of course, you're probably going to want to immediately, when you have a map that's live, it hasn't been flattened, you're probably going to want to select everything. You're probably going to want to group it. And then you're probably going to want to label it everything. Okay, so now everything's been labeled and then you want to lock it. And of course, you're going to want to put it on a layer. It says layer negative five right here. So it's already on layer negative five. That's perfect. And I won't accidentally select it anything when I try to put my map frame on it, right? So first step, if you have a pre-existing map, it's not flattened, select everything group it and then lock it so that way you won't accidentally select anything okay next step turn on your grid okay your grid is going to be extremely important when you when you're lining up uh, stamps or if you're using the mask tool because you're going to be using 
the grid as your guide when placing down your stamps, okay? So let's go ahead and pick some stamps that we want. Now there are built-in, um, there should be built-in frames that you can use. There's a whole bunch of options right here. We can also search all styles. Okay, now anyone can just use the pre-existing frames already, and so I probably won't use those, so I'll be using other stamps as an example, but there are tons of frames from different styles. Apparently flames also fall under the category of a frame. I don't know why that is, but hey, it works, right? So you'll see if you search all styles, every single frame that exists and all the styles will be available are also expanded here. So if you want, you can use the pre-existing map frames. There's nothing wrong with them. They work great. They're nice and they look good. Great job to the artist for that. That's great. But if you don't want to do that, if you would prefer to do something different, then you can always uh, use walls. So if I type in wall, and I'll make sure to turn off, uh, let's say all styles should be fine, okay? Uh, there's a lot of different wall stamps. Okay, hold on a second. There's a lot of different wall stamps. And so those wall stamps work just great as a frame. You can make a simple wooden frame by just uh, you know, putting a whole bunch of these together, you're just using the grid to line it up and make sure it's set to the right layer as well. I like to put my grid at negative five, which is what I'll end up doing instead. So that way, all my stamps will be un will be underneath it. So we'll go to negative five. Uh, I like to um, use a, a variety of stamps. Hello, first time chatter. Welcome. Glad you're here. Star Wars story VTT. Uh, I like to use that front, use the grid, and so you could just take as many of these um, these wooden stamps or whatever whatever you want to use. We'll start with something simple first, and just take a couple of these, and you're going to make the first corner of a frame, right? So you line them up, just like you're putting together your um, you're putting together uh, your walls, like you're making an interior, right? It's really as simple as that. And of course, we're going to want to select. Modern cities, I have no idea when we'll get that, but that's a great suggestion. Uh, you can also go to our Discord server and go ahead and uh, go to our request channel, art requests, and put that in request. I think it already has been requested, so go check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the shadows as well. I don't need shadows on for these. I'm gonna copy and paste. Let's go with V, copy, paste, there we go. Oops, I wanna select the whole thing. Select all of them, copy, paste. You only need to do one corner at first. Oh yeah, I totally agree. Okay, sci-fi is awesome, we definitely need it. Okay. All right. One second here, let's get it lined up properly. Oopsie. Okay, I don't think it's lining up properly. One second here, let me get it ready. There we go, that looks about right. That's what the grid is for, thank goodness, right? Without the grid, you'd go crazy. And I do I do see that uh, there is that there is that label there, and so we'll we'll fix that label as well, okay? We're sticking with just a basic, basic, basic frame. Nothing complex. Let's go ahead and put down a couple more and then we can copy and paste. Okay. Let's go ahead and piece this together. Now, once you've put together one corner, you just need to copy and paste and rotate it and then put it on there. Okay, so you go like this, just copy and paste. There we go. And then I just gotta rotate it all the way around. A little slow to load. Things have been hot lately. Getting a little warm. Okay, keep going here. We're almost there. Oopsie. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> oh, I skipped one. There we go. I'm going to rotate this. Can I get it right? Almost there. Oops. There we go. We're getting close. <laughs> I just got a lot of lag on my computer right now. I think it's because it's just so hot right now. I need to get maybe a better fan or something. Okay, let me just check this real quick. That looks right. Let's add one more piece here. Okay, there we go. All right, one more. Just 
So piece them together. Okay. So now you've applied a simple kind of frame, and you can change it to be whatever you want. You can change the color. You can change the, the shadows to make it pop out more, so I can go with an object shadow if I want to. So there's now a little bit of a shadow behind it. Um, I can go in and increase, increase that if I want, and so I have a little bit of a shadow all the way around it so that the frame pops out more. Uh, I can go in and change the color if I want to. I can go to advanced settings and just change the hue. So if there's a different color that I'd like, instead I can boost up this, the saturation. If I want a really dark, maybe a really rich kind of green, I can change it to any color that you really want it to be. If you want it to be brown, green, purple, blue, whatever. No, whichever color you like best. So this is like the very basics of piecing together your map frame. Um, it's just kind of creating one corner and then piecing things together. And of course, once everything's been pieced together, of course, you're going to want to uh, group it and then you're going to want to lock it as well, of course, or actually leave it open. You want to label it and call it a frame. Okay. Now this is just the first step. The first step is just creating the basic frame, right? All you have to do is create the basic part of the frame. From there, you can decide how much more you can apply to the frame. I'm going to change it back to its original color because I don't like purple. <laughs> so we'll make sure to change that. All right. Okay. I'm going to boost that saturation too. I want This is such a bright map. I kind of feel like the frame should be bright as well. Okay. There we go. Looks nice. Let's also bring the brightness down. No, that's fine. Let's go with that. So the first step is to create the initial part of the frame, right? From there, you can decorate things. You can decorate, you can add whatever you want. And again, it depends on the negative space. I noticed that there's nothing in, there's a lot, nothing in any of these corners here. A lot of these corners seem to have not much going on right here. Oopsie. Uh, like this one right here, not much going on right here in this space. Not much space going on in this corner here or this or any of the corners really, not a whole lot. So it does seem like we can, um, it seems like we can add some detail. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. The first one is just to decorate your corners and that's not complex, it's super easy. There's a whole host of things that you can do and you can add as much as you want and keep going with it. So that the next step is you open up that frame and then you can go in and maybe start with some corners. So I'll just maybe uh, crank up the saturation on this one. And I can go in like this, put this a layer below. And then just maybe add in a simple kind of design like this. We'll go take it down to the layer, make sure that it's right. There we go, zoom in real quick. So you can put in a simple, very simple rounded corners like this to just kind of make it easier. So let me go ahead and just flip, rotate this, and we'll do another one. One moment, there we go. Put this here, put it in that corner. You know, it's all about a process of continuously adding more, right? And there is a stop off point, by the way, as well. You don't want to go overboard to where your map frame is uh, a little a little distracting. It's a little too much, right? So again, just focus on, you know, what is on the map, how many details, what is appropriate, what do you need to put on there? Let's go ahead and put, make sure we're doing this to every single corner, okay? Do this one as well, line it up properly. All right, and then just put down one more right over here, okay? So lots of different things that you can do here. So now I've added that, right? Let's say you want to just keep going. You don't have to stop there. Keep adding more to it. Uh, just note your cutoff point is just is a matter of personal preference and distraction, okay? Hey, Edward Elford. Hey, I'm glad that you're here. Awesome. Okay, cool, right? So now that we've added those little pieces to the corners there, maybe we can add some more, right? Maybe we can increase uh, the size of one of these squares, bring them up a couple layers, and so I'll go ahead and just use one of these big squares right here. I've made it up a layer. I maybe want to decorate uh, the corners a little bit more. So we'll put maybe a large one like right here. We can put another one 
over here. We'll just keep going. We're gonna put one on every corner. So corners are a good place to start. Whoa, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> good one. <laughs> that didn't turn out well, now did it? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put that back. Naughty, naughty you. <laughs> All right, there we go. My mistake. Not sure what happened there. Probably had it selected when I uh, when I did that. So it's a naughty, naughty on my part. <laughs> And we'll go into more in-depth uh, frames as well, okay? Let's just make the start with the simplest ones first, okay? Because your frame is going to start simple first. It's going to start simple first, and then it's going to grow and become more complex the con as you continue to add more components to uh, the map, right? You're adding more and more components. So now we added more components. Now, if you want it to be more detailed, you can keep going keep adding more it's up to you um, so many different options to go about doing this you could throw in a whole bunch of stuff if you wanted to you can add more details maybe you wanted to put something inside of one of these things right here you can do that let's go to uh maybe this gothic horror let me see if i can find it here uh fantasy battle map and then i'll go in and find some gothic horror stuff real quick I'll show you some cool things that you can do to decorate your frame. Give us one moment here. I kind of like this thing right here. This is a nice face right here. You can just put this right on top. Put it up a layer, of course. And then you can change the blend mode. Let's turn off the layer. We don't need that. Change uh, the blend mode to luminosity. Okay. And now you have a nice little face in your corner. Uh, to give it a little bit more character right now you have a nice little face right here so now you have a little bit more detail in your frame you know so there's a lot of different ways to go about it and we'll also again we'll touch base on how to do it with a uh how to do it with the mask tool because the mask tool also has its own methods uh that face is from the gothic horror style um and it's a part of a wall set i believe so yeah this face just works great uh i've used it in the past too as wind heads if you've ever heard of what a wind head is it's like a head that looks it's blowing wind out of its mouth you know like me a little bit a little little winded you know <laughs> also got to fix to make sure these frames are lined up it's always nice to go and kind of just look at it and make sure things are lined up properly Let's take a look at where we are. Yeah, so nice. I enjoyed that. It's a really simple frame, not complex. Uh, there are also other things that you can do uh, to make it more unique. You can change the brightness. Uh, you can change frames to random, um, random uh, brightnesses to kind of create some interesting looking effects. So we can go in and maybe bring the darkness up on this one, maybe bring the darkness down on this one. You can change some of the some of the um, the brightness and the darkness on some of them to kind of make some of the some of these pieces pop out a little bit up to you. So there's a lot of different ways that you can you can do these different things. So it's a lot of different things. All right, awesome. Okay, we're just gonna save this. We're gonna ref I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna call it good on this on this frame. So it's just a process of addition. Keep adding more and more and more to the frame. You can add wavy patterns, interesting, intricate designs. I mean, the list of things that you can do is just nuts. You don't have to stop there. There's so many different uh, methods that you can do to make your frame. But this is the first step. It's just to make the basic rectangle or whatever shape it is frame. And then from there, just keep adding more and more and more and more and more details so that's basically excuse me how you put together that okay so i'll go ahead and save this and i'm going to show you how to use the mask tool and then also i'm going to show you some other fun techniques on how to make frames uh with the mask tool outside of just making a regular rectangular frame because you can also again like i showed you with that watercolor battle map you can use the negative space as your frame so i'll show you how to do that let's wait for this to save we'll move on to the mask tool and i'll show you how to use the mask settings the mask the stroke 
the inner shadow, the outer shadow, all those different uh, mask effects to allow you to make your frame to pop out more, okay? We're gonna let this save first and then I'll just create a new map. Now I've already uh, exported some maps, that uh, pre-made maps, and then I'm just going to flatten them to a layer and then we're gonna use the mask tool, okay? So let's go out of here and I'll show you the mask tool setup. So let's create a new map. Let's uh, go with a uh, fantasy battle map. That works just fine. I'll go with 3K. Landscape will work just fine. Okay. So now we're going to be using the add mode of the mask tool to create our frame. And we're going to be using uh, the BG layer will be where the, where the map is. So first step, let's import a stamp. Uh, import a custom stamp. So I'm going to first upload I'm going to go into choose image files and I have a couple maps that I have here. Let's choose one. One second here while I go over this and try to find a, a map. Let's go with this one right here. One second here. I need to load it. It might be too big. It's an eight megabyte. Uh, oh, no, this works fine. So I, I think I can. Let me just save it real quick. Open it up. Just give it a moment. So when you're using the math tool, you're probably going to have to flatten uh, your map to add a frame to it unless there's enough negative space like if there's no land masses going off the edge of your map then you don't have to do that but a lot of maps will probably have uh, a mix of the FG and the BG layers incorporated so of course you're probably going to uh, gonna want to flatten it right so I'll show you how to do that just one moment so I've got this map here I'm gonna go ahead and make it nice and large make sure that it fits into the whole thing City maps are absolutely fantastic to use for frames because you get to uh, incorporate uh, maybe some lore, some locations, whatever you want into it, okay? Once you've done that, now you're gonna wanna flatten it to the BG. Now your, your, uh, your blank canvas, when you first open up your map, the default layer is the BG. So we'll go ahead right now, go to uh, lock, so here we are, flatten to BG layer. So now it's flattened to the BG layer. So watch what happens when I add the mask tool, okay? So it goes right over it. So this is completely flattened. I can't use it. I can't edit this map anymore, okay? That's the one caveat with frames, all right? Now I'm gonna turn that, of course I'm gonna turn that grid on and I'm gonna use the grid to make a frame. I, this is, looks a little too much, so maybe I'll go with 80. Okay, all I did was just double it. It had 40 columns, so I just doubled that to make it 80 so I could have a thinner map frame. See what happens when I take it back to its its original default, 40 by 30. Uh, the map frame is, the grid is quite large. Each cell is massive. So I'm going to double the size to 80, and that way I have a thinner map frame to work with. Okay, first I'll just apply uh, the grid right away, and then we'll play with mask settings. So I'll just go onto this edge here with the mask tool like this. And we'll go ahead and build the simple frame. Just like with the stamps, you start with the basic frame first. You don't have to, uh, you know, make something complex at first. Stick with the basic shape. Make that frame. Follow the, 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 the grid. And we're going to play with mask effects. We're going to paint things. And of course, you can always add stamps with you can combine the two uh, styles by using both texture, the, the mask tool, and stamps to decorate your frame. So lots of different ways to do it. Let's go ahead and first and just add this in here. Okay. All right, keep going. We'll keep adding stuff in here. There we go. That looks good. Okay. All the way across. Okay, now we've done that. So now we also want to pick a color. For now, let's just pick white, and then we can play with it later, what we're going to add. So select FG. We're going to start with white. And the reason why I'm starting with white is because it's high contrast, and I can see the mask effects a lot easier. So I can see them uh, protruding away from the, the frame. So first, of course, I always turn off the ripple effects turn on the outline. In fact, we can just turn off all the effects for now. Okay, first step, choose the stroke color that you want. This one's got this brown stroke color, so we can change it to black 
if you want. Black is the easiest one against your white. And we can bring this down to size one because maybe these lines are a bit thick. So you can do that, that step, that's one step. And we can say, okay, well, I like this. So we can go with multiple things. I think that this is a desert, right? This is kind of a desert frame. So maybe a bright yellow would work well, right? For this kind of desert theme. And there's a great lava texture in Fantasy Regional HD that's super bright yellow and would probably work fairly well for this frame. So maybe I'll choose this lava texture. We'll just apply it first to see if it's little, if it's the right yellow or not. Seems a little bit wrong to me. Let's try another one. Let's try uh, a different, a different one. Oops, I don't want that. Let's try this one right here. Uh, yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, and we can turn the frame. We'll also turn off the uh, the grid for now because we want to see what it looks like. Okay, so step one, we've done that. Now we can play with mask effects. So we can go back in and let's say that we want to let's zoom out so I can get a better look at it so you can see it. Let's go with your outer shadow. Okay, so it looks like right now there's a white outer shadow. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Let's maybe go with a black one instead. Let that go. We'll maybe decrease. Looks like National Geographic, right? <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, increase the blur and the distance a little bit. And of course, we'll drop down the opacity. Okay. And we're just using the uh, object. We're using these shadows to kind of create a, sh a dark shadow that goes around the edge there to kind of make the frame pop out and then it kind of better encapsulates the map. So mask tool, absolutely fantastic uh, to use. And of course, when it comes to uh, decorating it, you just start with your basic rectangle and then adding it from there. So of course, I always like to go into my corners and you can go in and add in more. You can decorate it by increasing another cell just right to the corner to make it pop out. Maybe you want to uh, add more details. Maybe you're adding maybe uh, a couple more cells to each one, maybe creating this more intricate kind of corner. All right, let's do it to each one. Of course, if you're going to do it to one corner, you probably want to do it to another. And then you don't don't leave out all the corners, okay? <laughs> okay, so now we've added in uh, some un a little bit something unique in the corner there to kind of give it a little bit more character. Right. If you're not satisfied with that, you can go in and make changes. So let's say that I want to use this same color I just used right here. And maybe I want to bring the brightness down just a bit. And then I want to go in and I want to paint uh, the corner, right, to make it different from the others. So I can go in like this if I want and paint in the, the, different, uh, the different cells that I in increased like this. You can go about it that way if you want. Lots of different things you can do. You can do the whole thing if you want. If you prefer the whole corner to have that design, you absolutely can. So there's many, many different ways to decorate. And remember, your grid is going to really be your ally uh, when, with the mask tool and just any way of making your frame, whether it's stamps or otherwise, right? Maybe I want to continue it on, add another one in this corner like this. Okay, B creative, experiment, play around, have fun. Uh, it's practice a little bit, grab a map and do this method, play around, see what you can create, right? It's, it's really an adventure, okay? Let's go ahead and maybe change it up. I've added a little bit there. Uh, maybe I wanna throw in um, some stamps. So how would I go about doing that? Maybe I wanna throw in some kind of gem, right? Maybe I wanna decorate that corner a little bit more. So maybe I want to throw in like maybe a gem or something like this, put it in this corner here. I'll go ahead and make the shadow ooh, uh, sort of zero here. There we go. And then I can go in and just copy, paste, and throw in that gem. If it's too, too much yellow, you can, of course, go in and just change uh, the color. So if we want, we can select all the gems here. Uh, blue works really well with yellow, so we can go into advanced settings and change it to maybe uh, a, a blue color, maybe increase the saturation if we want. 
and maybe decrease the size a little bit more so it fits in. Okay, there we go. Let's see, that looks about right. Let's go ahead and turn on the grid so that I line this up properly. So if I turn that grid back on, you'll notice there's a center point uh, right there. So you can go in and make sure that you have your gem centered properly. See how I screwed that up there? Center that one. This one's a little off as well. So use that grid. The grid is what you're going to be using as a guide to line things up. So super important that you use that. So it's not very complex, right? Making a frame is easy. You just got to, it's, it's the starting part, really just mapping in general, finding the place to start can be very, very difficult, right? And so, you know, you just need to start with the basic frame first, the very simple one, and then add it from there, add more details, stamps, mask settings, whichever way that you want to go about doing it. Okay, there's so many different ways to go about doing it. You can even break up your frame to where it's not going completely around it. I can delete a couple things to make it look like it's kind of ruined a little bit. So if I want, I can delete a couple of these. Say I want to delete this one, a couple here, here, right? So this way, uh, you don't have these completely straight, perfect lines for a frame. You've broken it up a little bit, giving it a little bit more character, and even revealing some spots on the map that might have been hidden, right? So, so many different ways to go about doing it. Be creative, think about how you wanna put it together. And you'd be, you're really, you'll surprise yourself uh, because some of the most simplest designs look the best, really. Uh, if you're worried about like, well, I don't know how to put together all these illustrations and stamps to kind of create this super complex uh, frame, you don't have to do that. Just start with something very, very basic. And you know, you might be like, whoa, I don't need to add any more to this. It's so basic and yet it looks so good, right? So that's really the trick, okay? Start with something basic. If it's not enough, you're like, ah, eh, this, this isn't enough. I want more, 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 more. This is the way to go about doing it, okay? Start with something simple and then continue adding more to kind of beef it up, right? So we made a simple frame with mask effects. And of course, uh, you can also do inner shadows, outlines, all, there's all kinds of different ways uh, going about doing this. Maybe I want to add an outline to it. It's gonna create a kind of a little white line on the outside. There's just so many different ways to do this. Let's go play around a little bit more with some more mask effects. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Let's go ahead and go with one to see what it looks like first. And you'll see there's a little bit of a white frame around it now, see? So now we've added in that. Uh, you can add in your inner shadow if you want. You can go ahead and play with that. Just play with a whole bunch of stuff, why not, right? Just play with all kinds of things to see what you can come up with. So we'll open up outer shadow, well, I'm sorry, inner shadow, and we're gonna play around more, <laughs> more, yes. Uh, let's say I want to have maybe some red inner shadows or maybe some kind of yellow inner shadow uh, to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Uh, maybe I want to use a dark a black again to kind of create this uh, interesting bevel effect. Okay, so if I want to create like a bevel effect, I can. Maybe black isn't the best color. Maybe a dark, dark, dark yellow would work a little bit better and just bring down that opacity and you're kind of creating this uh, bevel-like effect. So if you look carefully, you'll see there's kind of, oopsie, let's add a little bit more. It's not quite as pronounced. There we go. So you can kind of see that there's an inner, kind of a bevel effect that's going on and that looks, uh, that looks nice as well. So there's so many different options with the mask tool. Uh, so now you've got this nice white with the black shadow, that black shadow is creating contrast against the white outline, causing the frame to really, really pop out. That inner shadow creates this bevel effect. So it kind of looks like uh, there are multiple faces to the frame, okay? So, so many different options. Really, what you need to do is just explore, figure out what mask effects look good with your, with your uh, mask frame. Lots of different things you can add, stamps. I mean, it is crazy everything that you can come up with. So I'll go ahead and save this, and I'm gonna show you uh, some other things as well. So one moment while I save this, we'll just call it desert frame for now. 
So we're gonna save this and I'm gonna show you also uh, some other things on using negative space as your frame instead of actually creating the frame itself. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you also how to use um, specifically the front map frames that I've made and others have used, how to apply a map onto that as well. So we'll show you that. Any questions so far about anything, feel free to ask. If you have an art request, please save that for uh, the Discord channel um, because that's really where you're gonna find all the requests. So if you have questions, please let me know. Any questions about this particular map frame, questions about how to use the mask effects, things like that, please don't be shy, ask away. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm gonna create a new map and I'll be showing you a couple more goodies as well. Okay, we just want to get that. Oopsie, I think did my map freeze up? It might have. Let me go back to return to your maps. There we go. Okay, so we, we started by making uh, one frame on top of a map with stamps, and we kind of made these cool, this very simple frame on top of a pre-existing map. I also uh, brought a pre-existing map, brought it to the BG, flattened it, and used the add mode of the mask tool to create that frame. Now, there are other things as well. I'm going to go ahead and create a new map. And I'm going to show you how to use the mask tool to create frame with negative space. So first I'll show you a really simple one. Uh, let's go with parchment world because I'm going to show you how to make a parchment style map with the, uh, maybe with burnt edges and maybe some crumpling and things like that. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's create a new one. We're going to go high 3K, leave it at landscape for now. Behind the temple there's a good pool of water with stairs. <laughs> Is there? I don't know. Is there? There probably is. Maybe. I don't know. I might have made a mistake. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So let's talk about uh, negative space. Okay. Whenever I'm making a frame uh, from scratch and there's no map there, I like to make sure that uh, the BG is going to be black. Now, if you're piecing together stamps, you might want to consider with a lighter color because you won't know if there's an object shadow or a layer shadow that's on. So if you're working with stamps, right, and I wanted to use a, uh, 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 <clears throat> oh yeah, I love that idea, Mikhail. A map frame with chronological elements will be cool. Absolutely, I love that. That's a great idea. Um, like basically putting a timeline in the map. I love that, in the frame, that's a great idea. Uh, so when you, I just want to give you this quick caveat about uh, putting your, uh, using map frames, using stamps, you might not see that there's an object shadow or a layer shadow on if the background is black, right? So if I go like this, BG, click enter, uh, you'll notice I can no longer see the shadow and that might be frustrating uh, to you if you're like, wait a minute, some of these stamps have object shadows, some of these have layer shadows. And it's like, oh crud, I have to select each one of these things and fix that. So with that, I only totally recommend you start with a lighter color first so that you can absolutely see whether you have object or layer shadows on, okay? Now since we're not using stamps, perfectly fine in this circumstance. I'm gonna show the grid. I'm gonna change it to a block shape. I'm gonna go in with the add mode of the mask tool. I'm gonna use the grid shape, of course. And I'm just gonna start by just making uh, uh, I'm not making a frame. I'm actually going to fill in the entire area besides this that one cell space in between. So first I'll just make the frame part and then I'll fill it in and I'll show you how to do that, how to do that quickly. Okay. The frame part is the first part. All right. So we'll go all the way across like this. There we go. Oops. I made a mistake. I'll have to go to subtract. Remove that one and then press add again right here. There we go. Now that I've done that, I can go in and just fill it in with the rectangle shape. Enter, done. Okay. So now that's been filled in. Okay. Now we're obviously going to want to change these mask effects. All of these look kind of weird. So for now, we'll just turn everything off. For now. The next step now is to kind of create, You, if you're wanting to create a, a parchment style map, and you wanna use the negative step as a frame, go to your subtract mode, uh, go to feature size eight, smooth, that'll work just fine. And then you're just gonna go ahead and increase the brush size a little bit like this. 
and then go right along the edge of the frame here and just start removing some of those edges like this. It's just simple as that. Go in and just boop, get rid of this edges like this. And you'll have some nice kind of a crinkled looking or at least a kind of torn edges like you would expect from like an old pirate treasure map or parchment map, right? That's the first step. And of course, if you want, you can add in more details. So if you wanted to have maybe uh, a corner where the it's been broken up like this, like this, you can maybe throw in a rando uh, hole in it to the side. Maybe we want to create another one going in like this. Maybe create another hole right there. Uh, maybe with this corner, you want to have it just completely kind of ripped off. Okay, so you don't have that one. Let's say you want to, again, maybe put in another kind of broken edge there. And then uh, just keep adding in a couple more segments. And this will kind of break up uh, the monotony, because you notice that the edges are rather monotonous looking when you don't shake out some chunks of the map, right? And so again, what we're using is the negative space, right? It's this black on the outside that's framing this map, right? Okay. Next step, you can go in now to your enable your mask effects, and we're just going to turn everything off for right now, uh, or at least the majority of them. I can turn off outer, inner, ripples, turn off all that stuff. Okay, now you don't have to have a stroke if you don't want to. <laughs> don't have a stroke, please. Don't, don't have a stroke. Uh, you can just turn the stroke off because the black outline already works uh, just fine. So first choose your inner shadow. Okay, and we're going to kind of create this bevel effect, maybe even a sense of like kind of burning, like maybe the edges were burnt a little bit in a fire. So we'll go ahead and push these edges out a little bit like this, maybe increase the size. There we go, that works fine. And then I'll bring the opacity down maybe a little bit. We'll see how it looks. There we go, that looks just fine. There we go. So now you have this kind of nice uh, little, eh, not necessarily a beveled effect, but you kind of have this effect where now the, uh, the kind of map pops out a little bit more. So if I turn it off, you'll see right here now I have uh, that all worked out and you, you can change things as you see fit. You can add an outline to it if you want. Maybe you wanna add a, a white outline, a white stroke. So we can throw in a white kind of stroke if you want to. So we'll throw in white because it's against black and so it will pop out quite a bit. And of course we can drop the opacity down a little bit if you want, or you can make it pop out more. It's really up to you how you wanna go about it. But you notice that I added a white stroke line a white stroke to it, allowing uh, the parchment to pop, but making the map kind of pop out even more, right? So then now I can go in, of course, and I can just go to uh, custom stamps. I'll go in and just use that same map I have right here, and I can just put it on, oh, let's say on top, I wanna make sure that it's covering the whole map, of course, so it has to cover the whole thing. There we go, that looks fine. Then you just go like this, go to select, go to flatten to FG, and then there you go. There's your parchment map right there. You just created a simple parchment effect. You grabbed your uh, uploaded map as a JPEG, and then you uploaded as a custom stamp. You go ahead and put it over the parchment uh, map that you've made, or the frame that you've made, and just flatten it to the FG layer. And there you go. And you can do this with any map that you want. Uh, uh, I used a watercolor city map for this, but you can take any of your parchment maps that you've made and just go ahead and plop that on there as you would kind of expect, right? It has that parchment feel to it. And of course, if you want to add a uh, more parchment feel to it, you should of course probably add some, uh, some kind of uh, maybe a texture. You want to add like maybe a paper tear or old paper. Uh, to it if you want to give it kind of that older feel to it. So we'll go with old paper. Okay, and I'll put that on there. I'll boost that up. So let me just go like this and bring it all the way up. So now I've kind of given it a more rustic kind of feel to it by throwing down uh, that, that texture to it. So you're really, really kind of uh, really just coming up with various ways to kind of create a framing effect. Again, it can be stamps. It can be the mask tool. It can be the negative space 
And so there's all different ways that you can go about uh, making it. So let's go ahead and save this real quick and I'll continue to show you a little bit more. We'll go also into a little bit more detail on making a more detailed frame because we still have an hour left. So I'm just going to recall this desert frame two or parchment map really. Parchment, there you go. And again, you don't have to add that white outline to it. If you feel like that white outline doesn't look good, just go ahead and remove the stroke, right? So it's just, there's so many different ways that you can go about uh, making, making your frame. So I'll go ahead and turn that stroke off here in a second so you can see what it looks like without it, okay? Yeah, I think it looks good too, Nemrod. I think it's very helpful. I think that it, it really works to give you kind of the desired effect that you're looking for. Let's go ahead and turn off that stroke. So if I turn that stroke off, uh, you'll see that uh, it kind of removes the uh, that white outline. And because it's black and there's a black fading around it, you kind of notice that it will fade out. Now you can make it completely fade out. I can go ahead and increase the black if I wanted to and make it look like it's just completely fading off. Uh, and we want to probably, let me uh, probably pick a black stroke, I would assume, because there is this kind of whitish outline. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. One moment. There we go. So we have this black kind of stroke. And so if you kind of want uh, the uh, the map to look like it's kind of fading out, then you can totally just do that, right? Where it just kind of looks like it's kind of fading out a little bit. So lots of different ways. Experiment, play with mask effects, find out what works best for you. And you know, it's just fun in general, you know, to really just play around with things, to try new things and to see what works out, right? So now we talked about uh, the negative space. I want to show you some other maps where I use the negative space. I created this funny, goofy, spoof, spoofy uh, map where uh, called Cartographer's Dilemma. And you see, I did a different, uh, I created a negative space by just creating an oval shape in which my map is being on. That doesn't mean that the world itself is oval. It's just that the canvas that I used, the canvas that I used, I didn't use the whole rectangle space as the map space. Instead, I just made a simple oval and then put uh, my map on top of that. Remember, it's a map. It's a representation of reality. And so you can use whatever style or unique kind of uh, projection that you want to use for your map. You don't have to make the entire canvas, the entire map, right? So you'll notice that that oval shape left some open space for me to put in maybe some lore, to put in maybe the cartographer character, the moon, the North Star. So it's, think about different kinds of projections. Those are also involved in your frame. You notice that I did create a thin frame around the outside, but I also created that oval shape in which to put down your map. Same thing here. I created a fake world here. A, you can call this silly geocentric nonsense if you wish. But I just created um, a, I didn't use the entire rectangle space to, <laughs> I knew you'd like the writer's block, Ryan. <laughs> uh, I only just used, again, that oval concept and then kind of created a uh, kind of a table format in which you put down your map. And again, now the negative space, there's lots of room to put in lore to kind of create a cross section for a part on the map to put a little bit of lore right here. So there's lots of different things that you can do. Remember that if you want to add in lore, you're gonna need more negative space. So that is really the trick if you want to do that. So there's so many options that you can really use. And remember, it doesn't have to be complex. You don't have to make it this insane uh, lore-like stuff. You can just make it just as simple as just this wooden frame. So there's a whole lot of different options. Be creative, experiment. I recommend that you just take a map that you've already created and do what we did earlier, flatten it to the whatever to the uh, BG layer or lock it and then put some stamps over it. So whichever method you want to choose, uh, go ahead and experiment and try new things. So that's really kind of like the gist of it is really you can kind of do that. So let's I'm going to show you real quick how to apply a map to a pre-existing frame. 
Okay, so I have this map that I already made it a Babylonian frame, and I'm going to show you how to add it to a pre existing frame that I've already made or another user has already made. Okay, so we'll open up this Babylonian frame. It's my favorite one I've made so far. Yes, I'm shamelessly plugging all my work here. <laughs> Naughty person, how dare you! <laughs> So I'll open this up real quick and I'll kind of show you uh, how to uh, go about making this. So I'm gonna go ahead and normally I, I had you go ahead and paint the frame, but I actually don't recommend doing that. Instead, I recommend using uh, a stamp. So I'll bring this up a layer. This frame should be at the highest layer really. So I'll bring it all the way up real quick. And again, remember I used that preset um, map I made right here. So just go in, of course, and just line it up to where it fits into the frame. Okay, and I went ahead and uh, go ahead and just applied, applied that frame. All I did was just put it right in there. You can flatten it if you want. Uh, you, if you feel like, um, if you feel like the frame is kind of not working well, then you can go ahead and just select all the walls. So if I select all the walls in the frame, select all matching walls, I can go in and go to object like this. We'll put in an object shadow and you can throw in shadows to make the frame uh, pop pop out more up to you how you want to go about it. But you see, you can now see uh, the shadows that kind of allows the frame to pop out more. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, it's up to you. So there's a lot of different methods to go about uh, applying uh, your frames, whether it's a pre-existing frame, pre-existing map, adding a frame on top of it, the options are endless. So there's a lot of different ways. Again, you can find all the front map frames that I made on my profile. I've made at least uh, at least a dozen of them, so there's a lot of them that you can work with. So just uh, go ahead and do that if you want, but I would totally recommend that you totally play with your own maps. Find your map and either do the stamp or the mask tool uh, strategy, or both. Both of them, both of those techniques work just fine. So is there any questions that people have right now? Uh, maybe we can go uh, find a map on the Explore page that's clonable, and we can maybe put a frame on top of that one. I know we already did uh, the Central Realms, and then we also did that Desert frame. Uh, we did that Parchment technique, lots of different ways. So if people have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, that might even be all we really need to do. I think I've kind of explained it all. Uh, I could explain how to do illustrative stuff like this one where you're actually drawing on it. And that's kind of more of an advanced technique. And for those of you who, you know, maybe you have the courage to do uh, some illustration, uh, a sci-fi border, uh, you know, a sci-fi, since there's not really official um, uh, sci-fi art, you'll have to tweak stamps or if you want you can use the mask tool and it's totally possible to create a uh, a map a do that let's just actually create a new map we'll go right in and i'll show you a little bit on that so high 3k we'll go to landscape i'll show you how to put this together uh sci-fi is uh, is awesome i know a lot of people want sci-fi it's highly requested so uh we can totally throw in i'll show you how we can put together maybe a sci-fi uh frame and how i would go about doing it so clearly, uh, you're it's gonna you're probably working with outer space. So you're gonna want your background to be black, because uh, if it's gonna be the inside of a ship, then you're gonna be in space. Uh, even if you're in an airship or if you're on a planet, uh, you might want to have a black background. So I'll throw in that black background. So with sci-fi, there's like so many different uh, stamps that you can work with, and it really just depends on how you want to put it all together. I knew, I do think there's some steampunk walls. Let me check steam here. Uh, no, let me type in metal wall, okay. One second while I look that up, there might be metal walls, there you go. So in that steampunk pack, you'll notice that there are some metal walls in here. They're a little patchwork, so it might not look uh, uh, proper, probably. Uh, you can change it to completely to gray if you wanted to. Uh, or you could just use the mask tool to kind of create uh, the effect that you want. So I'll first just go ahead and open up this, turn the grid on, and maybe we'll play around with some stamps to kind of create a sci-fi effect. 
of course, put that grid on negative five, of course. That way it's below the stamps. That way it's not obscuring the frame or whatever you're working on. And I'll just put a bunch together, of course, real quick. And then we'll go over kind of ways to kind of put that together. So let's go ahead and put this. Uh, when I think of spaceships, I think of metal. Uh, and when I think of sci-fi, I, I don't. I think of maybe like alien or organic. Uh, maybe we can go with that too. Maybe we can do half and half a frame. Like maybe half the frame is half human. The other frame is half alien. So a lot of people are kind of clamoring for the sci-fi stuff. So let's quickly do that. Let me also type in wall again. And we might want to take maybe a kind of a weird looking uh, wall that maybe has some twists and turns in it. This elven wall is super cool. Uh, it it kind of has an organic feel to it. Don't care for that color. So maybe if we boost uh, the saturation and kind of change that color, we can come up with some weird gray and purple go well together. So let's go ahead and maybe uh, create the second half of the frame as kind of an alien. So it's like maybe an aliens versus humans. We'll go tropey, kind of an aliens versus humans kind of tropey feel to it. So we'll do that real quick. Let me just quickly add in all this stuff. And we're going to add in all kinds of goofy stuff to it. So human, we're going to go with metallic, metal. With aliens, we'll go with uh, organic. What do you guys think? Sound good? Sound good? Is it good, folks? I hope so. I hope it's so, so good. All right, let's keep adding in these here. Go with this. And we'll even have some uh, of the alien part. Maybe we'll do like a, a Borg kind of effect, right? The, uh, I will assimilate you and make you my own. Resistance is futile. <laughs> we can get to maybe some of that, right? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and keep adding it in here. There we go. I do like purple. Purple is like one of my favorite colors. It's just beautiful. I love it. Okay, there we go. Oopsie, those aren't really kind of connected properly. So you kind of have to take a look to make sure that each one of these are kind of connected. You don't want a strange like black line, <laughs> just rando there. So cool. So now we have like this alien corner over here and kind of this metallic corner over here. So we have humans on one side, aliens on the other side. We've kind of created the basic frame. So let's just save this and we'll call it humans versus aliens. Okay. So we got the humans. Yes, I know I spelled it wrong. <laughs> humans. We must we must defeat the humans. Okay, so we got humans versus aliens. Okay. And now, as always, you start once you've created that mainframe, you get the mainframe. <laughs> once you've created the mainframe, <laughs> then you of course want to add details, right? And I always, of course, just like we did in the other uh, examples, we start with the corners, right? The corners is a great place to start. So let's go ahead and just continue on with the organic theme. So if I maybe top in, uh, let's go check out that Fay pack. That Fay pack is probably going to have uh, some nice it's going to have some probably some nice stamps that we can work with here. What I'm looking for is some scary like uh, Cthulhu, maybe some tentacles, uh, maybe some eerie color, maybe some ooze, some goo, weird stuff like that, right? So let's start with one corner first. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put these down for right now. So at least it's in my history. So I'll put one down there. Let's also open up an orb. I think blue looks pretty good with purple. So we can also throw down maybe some of these kind of colors as well and maybe throw down an orb. So I'll quickly just type in orb. And because I'm on a, on a specific pack, there we go. We'll go with this one. Okay. And I kind of want it to match that same purple. I think this, or this blue right here, is a nice blue. So let's replicate that. And we'll go with hue, and we'll try to replicate that color. Let me see here. Ooh, ah, there we go. That looks ooh, a little bit too green. My mistake. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put this blue orb in this corner right here. So that looks good right there. I'll uh, leave the object shadow on. I think that works fine. That or you can make it look like there's a shadow underneath it so I can drop the shadow like this and then bring it up. Or I can just don't even bother 
with it. You know, you don't have to add any shadow at all. Just go none, and that works fine too, okay? So I'm creating a center piece, all right? Let's do that orb, and then I'm also going to throw on maybe some other things. Let's go with a, let's go with a pillar. Pillars have some really cool and kind of unique kind of designs on them, so they might work uh, well as a kind of a thing that's going to hold. So we got some unique looking shapes on this one. Let's boost the saturation. And then maybe we can go through here and try to find uh, kind of a purple that might work well with this. Let's bring the brightness down. We'll change the hue to kind of get that color that we're looking for. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll work. We'll find out. Let me just apply it to the corner here to see how it looks. No, I don't think that works. We will avoid that. Let's not put that on there. Let's just put that one on. And then we'll have a tentacle. Hmm, do we want to change the color? It could be green. Uh, I think with aliens, we can go with something a little bit different, right? So we'll pick uh, maybe a color that will work well. Let's go with this one for now. We can change it as we see fit, right? So I'll go ahead and place this down like this. And the way I'm going to place it is to where it kind of matches and looks like it's kind of wrapping around the frame, right? So it goes up like this and it's going around the frame like that, right? So that works out well. Let's add another one. It's going kind of around it. Uh, we could go with, ooh, let's see. This one right here works just fine. Let's go with this one. And I'll put that one right there. Let's go down one layer, my mistake. Actually go up a layer and then put the orb up. My mistake. There we go. Aha, there we go. That looks much better. Okay, and then uh, we can blue alien blood. Yes, give us the blood. <laughs> blood for the blood gods. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flip this one, I think, like this, because I want it to have a similar design. Uh, so when it's kind of flipped like this, I have the tentacle showing on the outside of the frame, not curling up into the frame. It kind of goes well with the curvature of the other one, so that works out kind of well. Let's take a step back and take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go in and check out these blue ones right here. Uh, let's just put one down and just see how it looks. Maybe we can put one on top of this one. I'm not sure. Let's just play around and just see how it looks. Maybe we want to encapsulate uh, this orb a little bit with some interesting little pieces. Let's see. Uh, a little too big. This one right here. Bring it a little smaller. Put it on this corner right here maybe. Let's just see how it looks. Yeah, that'll work fine. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe give these an object shadow and instead uh, we'll go ahead and make the shadow blue of course give that a second to kind of load there we go i think it's a bit on the brighter blue side there we go so we have a little bit of a glow there uh, we can increase the size if you want the glow to be nice and big excuse me or if you want the glow to be small now i don't really know if i really like those there or not so I'm not sure. Maybe I can keep one of them and delete another one. I don't really know. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look. We got lots of options, so we'll play around. So let's go up to the next corner. We'll come and add more to this. We'll figure out more to this a little bit later. Let's go to the human side and kind of figure out how exactly we want to put together the human side. And again, you know, you're decorating the corner, so maybe we want to come up with uh, maybe uh, throw down a stamp in this corner right here. Maybe we'll go with a gold and yellow feel. Maybe there's a human empire or a human federation, uh, Star Trek style, uh, whatever. So we'll maybe throw in some, maybe a little bit of flourishings. There are other um, ones you can use as well. Like if you don't like this particular one, we can throw this one in here. Uh, it seems like it works just fine with that one. We can throw in, uh, this one right here if you want. I personally kind of like this one. Kind of has like a uh, military metal kind of feel to it. So I, I kind of, and by metal, I mean like a medal of honor, you know, that kind of thing. So it kind of has that kind of feel to it. So we'll go with gold and yellow for now. And then we can continue adding uh, more to it if you want. There are tons of different options. We can create all kinds of weird designs. We can go with a weird uh, sci-fi kind of mechanics, we can add some gears, we can add in uh, all kinds of weird stuff. So there's so many, oh God, that seems like Warhammer 30K. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to add, make it for Warhammer 30K, I wasn't going for that, but there's a lot of different things that you can do. Maybe you wanna put like, uh, 
Ooh, uh, a, a banner or something that uh, represents the Imperium or the Federation or whatever, you can do that too. So we can throw this down, uh, maybe grab a rug of some kind um, that will work as a banner. Uh, there's all these different things, so many different options, really. <laughs> the, the, the options are limitless, right? So if I want, I can throw in kind of this, uh, kind of a banner. In here like this uh, maybe make it a standard of some kind yeah it can be Warhammer 40k it can be whatever design you want to come up with totally up to you so if you want to throw in kind of this uh, metal look to it let's go in and change the object shadow as well go to zero yep it can be a torn banner exactly that's an even better idea I'll make sure to throw that in there good job Nemrod by the way good call uh, I can uh, make it look like there's a shadow like make it look like uh, there's a light source above, and so I've got a shadow to make this thing pop out underneath. Let's go ahead and grab that uh, torn uh, rug uh, that Nemrod suggested. Great idea. Love it. Uh, let's also boost that saturation so we can really get that red in there. There we go. I like that even better. Good job. And we'll go ahead and uh, select it so we can group this. And then you can put it up in the corner right here. You can put it up in the corner right here like this, you can just put it directly in the corner uh, where it's just kind of hovering, where it's connecting to the frame, like this. Uh, it's whichever method you wanna go about. The gold, the red, and the gray are, are great colors. They work well together. We can incorporate uh, more red if you feel like, okay, well, we're going with gold and red, so let's maybe incorporate more of that. So you can add in uh, as much red as you want. You can throw in, um, you can create uh, more uh, decorative um, corners by maybe throwing in this uh, metal one right here and then throwing in uh, the rug on top of that. If you want to create some kind of intricate design, you can change the blend mode to make it uh, maybe overlay on top of it, a soft light, screen, lighten. If you want, you can have it like this so you have it uh, looks a little kind of weird. You can put it on like this if you want. So there's a lot of different options. You really have to think about how you want to put it together. Uh, maybe you want to make it um, weird, uh, this weird design where it's uh, a whole bunch of things are holding it together. So I can go ahead and just put a bunch of these uh, weird things together to kind of create this weird, strange effect. One moment while I put that together. So maybe I want to put a bunch of these weird things together. Kind of create this weird kind of intricate uh, design to it. Let me erase this. Let's do another one right uh, here. So I can go ahead and put one. Let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and create a little bit more design here. Let's put uh, this right here like that. Make sure we go down a layer. My mistake. Uh, let's go ahead and add some more. We'll just keep going. Just keep adding all the unique and fun stuff that we want to it. Let's go another one right here if you want. In this corner right here, you can put it, uh, I mean, wherever you want. The options are uh, limitless. There's a lot of different things you can throw in there. Um, let's go ahead and check out some other stamps that might work with sci-fi. Uh, steampunk has some really kind of weird looking steampunk devices that you could probably desaturate and use as sci-fi. So lots of different options. Let's just real quick go in sci-fi. You'll see there's some of these interesting kind of looking, uh, maybe uh, these radiator designs. These things are cool. You have this, you have piping, uh, you have these strange lights, ducts, all these different kind of things that you can throw in. Remember we were working with gold, so we can continue with the gold theme by maybe just throwing in like a random kind of gold piece on top right here like that. You can throw in a longer one if you want to the side if you want, like down here. And remember, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. Just remember that your frame can be asymmetrical. You can throw in all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, we'll add neon lights, don't worry, we'll get to that. Uh, let's just continue decorating here just real quick. We'll get to it, I promise. Um, maybe you wanna throw in uh, maybe some kind of mechanics, uh, some kind of mechanics lining the wall with these strange pieces here. Um, you can add in, I mean, just there's so much uh, that you can do uh, to your frame to decorate it. See, I got it some gold here. We're sticking with, just remember that when you're putting down stamps, you do want to think about the overall theme, right? You want to think, okay, 
uh, pick pick a tricolor scheme, uh, a dual color scheme where you're just using black and white, whether it's red and gold, whether it's a tricolor scheme, you're working purple, blue, green, purple, blue, white. Remember, there are some colors that work with all colors. Gray, white, and black are neutral colors, so they work with all other colors and they're going to make them pop out. That's why I went with this gray metallic frame. It makes that red and that gold pop out and it also makes the alien purple also pop out, right? So remember, gray, white, black are neutral colors. They work perfect when you want to make another color pop out against those colors. So remember that, right? White and black, gray, they're contrasty. When you put another color against them, they, that other color, the red, blue, whatever, will pop out. So fact then, okay? Okay. Now we've done a little bit over here. I might want to consider adding just a couple more things to this corner here, up to you. Uh, maybe I'll put one right here if I want for now, maybe that corner there. And then we can add in those interesting uh, lights. I did see some people... Yeah, oh, yeah, and yeah, it, your, your map doesn't, it doesn't have to be extremely uh, decorative and crazy, okay? So just kind of factor that in. Someone mentioned in lights, we can totally throw in like lights if you want to. Maybe you want to have some crazy looking uh, lights just sticking out uh, like this. Let's throw one in there. Maybe you want to throw in another one. There's all these different lights. I think also there's one in trains. Uh, trains have a really cool uh, one that I really like. Let me see if I can find that for you. One sec. Uh, there it is right here. So it's kind of a cool looking. Uh, one second while I open it up. One sec. Where are you? There it is. Uh, there's some nice train lights right there as well. So if you want to throw in uh, lights, you can. I stuck with, with gold because it kind of suits in, but you can totally saturate them and just change to whatever you want. So you want red, you want purple, you want back to that gold again, green, whatever you want, right? So don't forget to play around with light colors. For this one, gold kind of makes the most sense, right? Because it fits in with the color scheme, right? We're using gold, red, gray, right? So we'll go back over to here and someone was talking about neon lights. We can totally do that. Let's maybe create some other orbs and decorate them. And the way that I'm going to do that is find spots where they kind of fit in. So you see there's this nice curve right here. I can put that one there, copy and paste it. We'll go up here. Let's put another one maybe in this curve right here. That works nice. Uh, and then let's throw in maybe a little bit of a larger one. Not as big as that corner one, but still big enough to where we can put it in. So put one on the inside right, right there. So now we have these nice kind of orbs in here. Let's make this one just a teeny bit bigger, and then we'll throw in that smaller one higher up over here, okay? And then maybe even smaller one right here. Just bring it even smaller, there we go. Okay, so now you have some nice little orbs built in there. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them. Let's go with select all from this set. Let's give it an object shadow. We'll go with blue, of course. There we go, let's go with zero, of course. I don't want that to be there. Let's boost up the size. Let's zoom in real quick and just see how the shadow looks. Yep, or how the how that works. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with that. That looks fine. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was there not an eyeball stamp that was added recently? I can't remember. Let me double check. Was there an eyeball added? I forgot about this. This was a request. Here we go. There are these eye walls right here. I forgot to mention these. These were just created as a contrast uh, winning entry. So this this I forgot all about these. I haven't even used them yet. This is my first time. Uh, we can totally use these as well. Uh, so we can go in and try to find that purple. Let's boost the saturation. So that way I can really get, find that, that sweet purple spot. Uh, there we go. I think that looks about right. We'll bring the brightness down. Okay. And you can also just throw in these kind of rando kind of eyes as well. It looks a little dark. Let's boost the brightness a little bit more. I want it to kind of match in. And we'll just copy and paste, throw in another one. There we go. So now you have some like creepy, weird looking kind of eyes that are also incorporated, giving it more of a creepy looking feel to it. Uh, there's no corner ones, so we couldn't put one in the corner. That's okay. Uh, we went ahead and just did that, and there's a nice uh, strange orb, okay? 
Welcome to the hive. <laughs> okay, let's keep adding a little bit more alien stuff to here. Um, there's also some cooler stuff that we can add. I think there's something called sewer roots, and sewer roots are very organic looking, very kind of creepy looking. So these will work just fine. So I'll go ahead and uh, first just change. I boost the saturation all the way up on purpose so that that way I can kind of uh, see the color a little bit better. So I'll go through uh, the various options here. I'm gonna keep sliding it until I get that same purple I want. And I'll bring the brightness down a little bit and I'll use it as the backdrop behind the frame. So I'll go ahead in like this, put this in this corner like this so I have this nice kind of squiggly looking yeah, kind of sticking out in the corner there. I'm gonna bring the dark, bring the brightness down because I want the frame to be popped out and I want that part to be a bit darker so it looks like it's in the background, right? So I've used these sewer roots. We're gonna go ahead and put another one right here against here. So they have another one in that corner. So you kind of have that nice kind of creepy feel to it. And we'll throw in just one more, maybe a smaller one like this in this corner here. One second, bear with me folks. There we go. And then we have another one in that corner right there. Okay. Let's take a step back and take a look how it looks. Yep, let's turn that, uh, we can turn also the grid off. We don't need that anymore. So we can go ahead and save it. 116 changes, where are we at? 11.6. EST. Yep, we got a half hour. Good. I'm glad that we were able to sit down and actually walk through making uh, an actual map and a theme. Great job on choosing uh, the theme, by the way. I Sci-fi is awesome, um, and I'm super excited to when we can kind of implement that kind of art into the tool. So super exciting. <sighs> okay, let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at so far. Uh, let's maybe continue with... Uh, the human part and we can throw in a series of stamps to kind of decorate it. So let's go in. Yes, spaceships. I'm excited about spaceships. Whoop whoop. Spaceships. I love it. I do. I really, really do. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and I'll open up that train again. That train and steam pack. I think these two packs uh, work the best to me. We could even open up a gothic horror pack here, but you'll see there's also some interesting kind of uh, pieces here. You'll see that there are some train pieces that work really quite well uh, for a sci-fi kind of capacity. Let me just go ahead and go down to them real quick. We can get to that. Oh, no problem, Edward Elfric. Absolutely. Oh, e Edward Felric, sorry, not Elfric, my mistake. Um, my pants, naughty boy. One second here. Maybe a Red Dead Redemption style? <laughs> Totally doable. Really, it is really quite doable. Um, let me go through here and just kind of look at some of the things that we have here. Like some of these pieces right here, uh, these train connectors. You've got uh, even some uh, engine pieces here if you want to throw in maybe a console panel uh, on top of it if you want. You can totally throw in like a console panel right here on top if you want. So you kind of have like a console piece here. You can flip it around, have it this way if you want, or whatever. So lots of different options there. Throw in maybe another console panel right here if you want, if you're throwing in more details to kind of give it a, that kind of sci-fi look, right? Uh, same thing, uh, adding in these uh, bizarre looking train connector pieces right here, these kind of like hooks. You know, these look kind of scary and kind of odd. So if you want, you can have a couple maybe uh, protruding out of something if you want uh, so many different options you can like bring it like this so it looks like it is a hook sticking out you can throw another one right here if you want we can flip it lots of different freaking options for uh, putting together uh, your frames I also like uh, this strange kind of circular one right here these are also kind of cool right here if you want you can throw in a couple you know randos on the side right here to make it look like maybe they're, I don't know, pinball machine bumpers. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is you you want to do, right? So lots of different options uh, that you can kind of go with. For me, I like to put the most decoration in the frame, into the, into the corners, 
Okay, that's just my opinion. I think the corners look the best. Uh, I did notice that some of these corners look kind of plain, like the connection between this one and this one looks a little off. So maybe we want to uh, instead just incorporate another one. So we can take this object, uh, we'll turn that shadow off for now and bring the brightness up so it kind of pops out and then put it in the foreground like this and maybe have it growing out of the metal. And you can also uh, make it to look, make it look like uh, there's a process of assimilation kind of happening. And so the way to do that is to maybe bring the saturation back up a little bit, change it to maybe a kind of purplish kind of color, bring the brightness down, uh, and then maybe desaturate a little bit and kind of make it feel like it's already kind of taking over the metal, right? We'll do the same thing here, right? We'll take this piece right here, boost the saturation, and we'll change it to that purplish kind of hue color, bring the brightness down, and already you kind of see that we're kind of creating a, a little bit of a takeover, right? So we'll copy and paste and put this one on here as well. Put that on top like this so that we have that assimilation process kind of taking place taking place right bum, bum, bum. and then from there of course you can throw in your light sources if you want light sources create a sense of depth so it's really nice to add them so i'm going to search all styles and then type in light because there are some spooky blue lights i think flowing around so instead of like changing the hsbc of a stamp all i have to do is just look for that spooky light i think it's called spooky but there's these horror lights right here. These will work just fine. And what I'll do is put them on layer five because I want the light sources to be the highest they can be. And then I'm going to go ahead and just place them uh, on top. And of course, I'm probably going to want to bring the, the opacity down because remember, we mentioned the neon lights, right? So let's go ahead and throw down some light sources on top of all the ones uh, where there's an eerie blue light, as you would expect, right? So we'll throw in that. Of course, I see there's a red eye there, so it might not hurt. To, it might not uh, be a bad idea to also maybe make some of that pop out as well. So let's go back in here. Let's grab this orange color right here. We'll apply it first to see how it looks to make sure it's the right color. So I'll go ahead and put this down. Uh, let's boost the saturation. There we go. Um, let's boost the saturation a little bit more. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and put it down on top of that one and on top of that one. So we have some red glow. Okay, now when you factor, when you put down your map, of course, uh, let's go ahead and fill in that with our different colors. With black, it's really hard to tell uh, how much light is gonna be showing up. So let's go ahead and put down a texture real quick and see how the light sources look on the map. Because remember, we're working with black. The light sources will not interact with black, right? They're gonna interact with a, perhaps a different texture. So let's go ahead and just fill in uh, this with just a random texture. Remember, we're experimenting with how it's going to look. So let's just go ahead and press enter. And now we can go ahead and see how the light sources are interacting with the map. So maybe that light source is a little too big. Maybe this one's a little too big. It doesn't seem to even seem to be the right color, actually. We could go in and maybe give it a little bit more of a reddish color. There we go, purplish color. And put this on top right here. And I would just leave the out the outside of the map black so that the light doesn't interact with it. And then that way, uh, th those interesting lights will pop up, okay? And of course, you're going to have to factor in. I you notice that these roots now are super black or super dark. You probably will have to change uh, the brightness of these as you go, depending on how dark or how light your map is, okay? So if your map is super dark, it might not hurt to make those pieces do that, right? But if the map is super dark, then it might be fine with making those pieces that you want in the background of the frame to be a little bit darker. So always factor in what, uh, always make sure to apply the map while you're maybe making the frame to see how the frame interacts with the map. You know, I just made a map frame right off the bat. We don't have uh, a space, space uh, map on here, but it's always helpful to put down some kind of texture or a map so you can see how the frame interacts with the map, okay? If you just make the frame right off the bat and then you apply the map, you'll kind of be like, well, wait a minute, I kind of goofed up by not uh, applying the map first to see how it looked, right? So just kind of factor that in. I'll go ahead and go back and just make it black for now. I actually like it that way. Um, and then the last couple things that you can do 
uh, are you can throw in some interesting kind of artifacts, uh, weird blood stains or stuff like that. You want someone said alien blood, so why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and type in blood. Okay, uh, let's go with these ones for right here. I kind of like these shapes. And uh, we'll go ahead and just put them down like this. Now remember that when you do this, um, you might not see uh, the right texture. So let me quickly just add a texture right here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I'll enter that. Okay, so you see that blood right there? I'm gonna go in and change the color to like maybe a blue or a green whatever strange color that I want to make it, right? And now I'm going to change that blend mode. And we can see, I think this color right here works pretty good. Maybe I have to change the brightness a little bit. I'm not sure, but it did add some kind of interesting looking kind of weird glow to it. Let me also bring the size down. Uh, let me put it on top of this one right here instead, right there. There we go. That looks... A little but a little better uh, we can go through the different blend modes again to kind of see what works best yeah that looks good I like that we'll copy and paste that and just do it again right here in this corner right here we're gonna push it up a layer of course there we go like this we'll rotate it there we go now we got some blood in there all right let's go do another one put it right here there we go now we got some blood push it up a layer of course we want it to get on there put it on some of the metal too there we go. <laughs> now we're talking. Right. Okay. Well, I think that is it. So I, I was really excited about this, about this one in particular. I personally love map frames. They're a lot of fun. We're at 69 changes. That's a that's a great time to save, I think. Perfect. I don't know how I got to that number, but hey, it worked out perfect. All right. So hey. I think that's it. Does the people have some questions they want to ask um, about anything, your choice, whatever it is you want to want to add, anything you want to mention? Um, don't forget to also go to my profile if you want to check out the frames I've already made. In fact, I'll uh, make this frame clonable so that you can go ahead and use this for your sci-fi maps if you want uh, alien versus um, human or humans versus aliens. So please let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer those. It doesn't have to be about map frames in particular. Please, again, anything with suggesting art, uh, I recommend that you go to our, our uh, Discord server and go to art requests and go ahead and do that. This is not the right place for that. I mean, you can ask, but it won't do much good here. You probably should go to our Discord server. Of course, make sure that you go to the roles channel click the incarnator role because you're going to want to see all the different channels we have. You won't unless you have the incarnator role. Okay. Some people will be like, I don't see any other channels and they'll respond and help for something that they need. And they don't realize they don't have the incarnator role. So always make sure to get that incarnator role. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Anybody have any questions so far? Please let me know. Please let me know what questions you have have the streams a little bit shorter that's kind of nice not to go for 2.5 hours yep i'll wait just a few more moments let people answer ask any questions that they might have about the frame so many different options it's just i mean there's just so many different ways uh to go about doing uh your map frame i mean really it's just a very exciting process just putting everything together and figuring out what you want to make and how to create it so lots of different options options uh, what filters would work for sci-fi um you know let's go ahead and do that let's play with filters we still have a little bit of time um you know it's really hard to decide i mean uh mm, that's a tough one i don't really know i mean when it comes there's no specific sci-fi frame it's a specific sci-fi uh one that i can think of specifically unfortunately um yeah, I can't really think of any. Uh, I mean, you can use like, uh, there's like faded, there's like a faded one if you want to create like a faded effect. Uh, you, the warm versus the warm cold one works for all kinds of maps. I don't think there's any specific uh, filter that I would think of that works uh, specifically for sci fi maps, but I haven't really sat down and really uh, explored and experimented 
with that? You know, I really haven't thought of that yet, but that's a great question. Uh, I like that. One thing I also want to mention, since we're in space, there is one thing that you can kind of add uh, to your frame, and that is stars. Um, and you definitely want to add in stars uh, to the outside of the frame if you want. That's totally doable because uh, we're, you know, sci-fi is the, the theme. So if I was to take uh, this texture right here and kind of put, uh, you can put stars in your background and that way it kind of looks like it's outer space. So lots of different options there. And you can go with different colors too. These are white, but you can go with purple. There's lots of different fade lights that you can work. Uh, see, there's some purple ones right here I can go in and maybe say I want purple stars over here to kind of represent uh, the alien side, right? Or you have maybe some white stars, some white, whitish colors over there, right? So lots of different methods uh, that you can kind of go about it. Up to you how you want to do it. So lots of different things that you can do to really kind of make uh, your frame pop out. My suggestion is just to really sit down and experiment with things. Uh, really just, you know, uh, I don't even recommend putting on a, on, your, on, a, on a map right away. You can just go right in, put down a white screen, the white screen, and just start putting together stamps or mask effects. And that way you kind of just get a general idea on how to make frames. Once you kind of understand the mask tool basics, how to use the mask effects, then you can really start to be like, okay, I know a little bit about how to put frames together now. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick a map that I really like and apply a frame to it. And that's mostly what you'll, most of you will probably do here is you'll probably want to apply a frame specifically to a pre-made map because why make a whole new map for a frame when you can just make the frame and apply it to the map, right? So remember how I did that too. Uh, select every single thing on the map group it, label it everything, and lock it, okay? Lock it, and that way you won't accidentally select it. And then start, uh, turn on your grid and just start putting together your frame. Remember, it's a very, very simple process. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's a very simple process. You just need to make the basic frame part first. From there, you just add more and more and more details as you go. It's not a complex process. It's actually way easier than you think. And it's actually a lot of fun. You really surprise yourself what you can come up with. So just experiment, have fun, play around. Feel free to clone any of the frames that I've made. You want to tinker with them, change them. Most of my maps are, are for free or can be just cloned and used. Just go ahead, use them, play around with them uh, and see what you can kind of come up with. You know, reverse engineer if you have to, whatever it is you need to do, okay? Now there's any, any bit last bit of questions before I take off for my lunch. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this this stream. We had a lot of fun. I just want to remind you that next week there are no streams. So next week, the 5th to the 11th, no streams. I'm going on a birthday vacation. So just remember that. But we still have tons of streams coming up. 13th, 15th, the 20th, 22nd, 23rd, 27th, and 29th all have incredible streams coming up. So you know how we, you know how we do it here at Incarnate. We, we drive you crazy with so much new art and content. That's what we do here, right? <laughs> That's our job, to overwhelm you with content. We want to fill up your goodie bags. That's what we do here. Open up your tote bag and receive these goodies. Do it now. <laughs> That's what we do here. Yeah, thank you, Edward Felric. Thank you, Cheryl, for moderating. Thank you, Becca. So glad that you were here. Absolutely love, love having you all here and uh, talking with you and just going through the process. Great stream. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Lord Marshall. I appreciate you guys all, appreciate you all so much. So I will see you all uh, uh, the following week uh, on the 13th, which is a Monday. We're going to be continue making our points of interest, followed by the 15th on Wednesday, how to create good versus evil maps. So I'm very excited about that. And for those of you who missed this stream, don't worry, you can go back onto Twitch, onto Twitch and re-watch it from the beginning, or you can go on YouTube. Uh, this will be uploaded to YouTube. Today, it takes a little while for it to upload, so just be patient, okay? So I'll get that up there for you. Thank you, everybody. Please stay safe and healthy and merry map making, all right? All right, I'm going to miss you guys. You guys have enjoy the rest of your week and the following week, okay? I will talk to you all very soon.